Fertitta Hall is getting back to normal after Monday's active shooter scare. We hear from Marshall about what's planned for students going back to school. And we're finally hearing from the girlfriend of the Las Vegas shooter as President Trump pays a visit to first responders. And a new recycling program is aimed at making USC greener. We'll show you how. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. Students in the class where Monday's active shooter scare started tell us they're still shaken. Good evening, I'm Madeline Audley. And I'm Suji Nam. Students are heading back to class next week with a new professor. On Monday, USC students were told to shelter in place after reports of gunshots in Fertitta Hall. It all started in a class where students say their professor told them there was an active shooter on campus. The Marshall School of Business responded last night by sending an email to those students. Now, in that email, Professor said, quote, We appreciate that yesterday's lockdown could have been a very stressful event for many of you in the classroom. Your response is to be commended, and we appreciate the efforts you took to keep our community safe. Our primary focus is your well-being, and we want to offer support and assistance, end quote. And now we spoke with students who were in that class. After... You know, we got evacuated and everything. Nobody really said anything to us. It was just kind of just like, all right, now go about with your day. Marshall didn't really do anything for about 36 hours at least. No one knew if it was classes were going to continue. So I felt like uh, they dropped the ball on that, just providing information on what was going to happen. Personally, I'm, I'm not worried or anything about going in for the future. Now, as of yesterday, DPS said the professor was under a 72-hour evaluation, and for now, her classes will be taught by another Marshall professor. Annenberg Media reached out to DPS and USC Media Relations for more on the investigation, but no one got back to us this afternoon. Now, students who find themselves anxious and stressed after Monday's incident can get counseling from the Engelman Health Center, but Annenberg Media's Hannah Wing talked to one student who believed the school is not doing enough. Junior Hannah Kiani received several messages from USC students after her Facebook letter to President C.L. Max Nikias. They sought guidance counseling through USC. They had to wait weeks for an appointment. They, and when, when they were given an appointment, it was a short phone call that rendered their concerns as not important enough or not severe enough. But an Eggman Health Center psychologist Kelly Greco says professional counselors are available to students. A student needs to walk in if um, they're having a hard time functioning, whether it's academically, whether it's I can't get out of bed, whether it's socially. So if it's causing a significant amount of distress, um, that's something that can, is, can be deemed a crisis. So it's really like we just want the student to walk in and then we'll do the assessment and kind of look at what the best fit for services would be. USG President Austin Dunn believes that mental health resources need improvement. Especially in times of crisis, I think we go back to the staffing and the funding and the needs of a, such a large student body without having the staff to meet those needs. So I think um, continuously having the conversations of, okay, where are our problems, where are our most urgent problems, and let's tackle those first is I think the manner in which we're going to proceed. The University of Southern California gives a premium membership to all students for an app called Calm. It works on things like reducing anxiety, helping with self-esteem, and most importantly, managing their stress. Now on the app, there are certain things that are calming to students like a lake with running water, sounds from a fireplace, and even rain on dripping leaves. It's very important that students at this time download the app and it can help them through their hardest times. Reporting for Annenberg Media, I'm Hannah Wing. Investigators are still trying to find the motive behind Sunday's deadly attack in Las Vegas. Today, the FBI is questioning Stephen Paddock's girlfriend. She was out of the country at the time of the shooting. Mary Lou Danley says Paddock bought her a plane ticket to the Philippines before the attack and wired her money while she was there. In a statement read by her attorney, she says she never considered Paddock a violent person and had no idea about the attack. I am devastated by the deaths and injuries that have occurred. I knew Stephen Paddock as a kind, caring, quiet man. It never occurred to me in any way whatsoever that he was planning violence against anyone. Anything I can do to help ease suffering and help in any way, I will do.
President Trump visited Las Vegas today to comfort victims of the shooting. He also met with law enforcement and doctors who treated the victims. I visited the hospital earlier today where many victims are still recovering from their wounds. And we ask God to ease their suffering and to speed their healing. The doctors, the nurses, all of the people at the hospital have done a, a job that's indescribable. Police say more than 300 people injured in Sunday's shooting have now been released from the hospital. As this tragedy continues to unfold, many are questioning if it can be considered terrorism. Just a short time ago, I spoke with the interim director of the journalism school, Gordon Stables, who says he thinks it is. In your mind and by definition, what is terrorism? Uh, the easiest and most shorthand way to think about it is violence that has a political purpose or political motivation. And that's hard, but it starts to at least open the door to even within a legal system, there's the act of what took place. And then there's also, well, what is the goal or the intentionality behind the act? There's sometimes different definitions, just even based on, you know, a state government versus a federal mm -hmm. government. Is it time to unify those? And is it time to maybe update those definitions? That's a good question. And, and I think the hard part would be different communities have made decisions about certain kinds of political violence that is more or less important. And so I think the challenge would be the communities that would have to make those decisions have both value differences as well as kind of disagreements on that. Based on what we've seen in Las Vegas, would you personally constitute that as an act of terrorism? Oh, absolutely, and I think that in, the, in an American context, the idea of um, a mass killing, and there's different definitions, and so even recently the, the notion of this is the biggest mass killing in modern history has all those different caveats and footnotes, is to say part of it is because it was done in a way at a public target to inflict not only loss of life and injury, but the notion of fear, the notion of terror, to convince people that it's not safe to be in public gatherings. So to me, in this case, to, to try to target a concert is clearly trying to inflict a message as well as the harm. When these things come up, you know, this is typically now the first question that people are asking, is this terrorism? Why do you think there's so much confusion and so much, you know, misunderstanding about what that term means? I think the big reason we're looking for meaning is um, and we use communication to organize our life. In a case like terrorism, the difficulty is we're looking for what's the way to predict our lives. How might this be different if the shooter's race was not white? It highlights the broader notion of um, it, what do we do with political violence that that political violence isn't unique to the radicalized Islam in the Middle East. And I give the example of Dylan Roof and the shooting that took place in, uh, in the church a few years ago. That highlights this idea that we should have a way to engage it and think about it. And, and, I, and I think that's kind of where the struggle comes in. What do we do? Is it for lack of a better word, is there a meaningful way to understand that ideology that gives rise to this violence? The FBI is still investigating the attack and the shooter's motives. They have not yet announced whether or not this mass shooting was a terrorist act. Now, after this week's mass shooting in Las Vegas, gun control advocates are once again calling for tighter regulation on firearms. Democratic lawmakers are calling for gun control measures that would ban the semi-automatic weapons and accessories used by the Las Vegas gunmen. The former representative and mass shooting survivor Gabby Giffords wants a bipartisan effort. Stopping gun violence takes courage. Democrats, Republicans, everyone. We must never stop fighting. Fight, fight, fight. But the gun rights group, Gun Owners of California, believes the Second Amendment was adopted to guarantee people's safety. We don't have a gun control problem. We have a crime control problem. To disarm all of the law-abiding citizens because one crazy individual committed an atrocious crime just doesn't make sense. But despite the arguments of gun rights advocates, California has some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation. The DACA renewal deadline is tomorrow, but that means applications from L.A. need to be mailed off tonight. For more, let's go to our political anchor, Tanvi Varma. Tanvi? And Suji, today was the last day to express mail DACA renewal forms to the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Office in Arizona. USC students would have had to mail their applications by 4 o'clock this afternoon to make it in time. The Immigration Office says they have received nearly 7,500 applications in the last two days. As of this morning, 72% of eligible DACA applicants have applied for renewal. 
there are still more than 42,000 eligible recipients who have yet to apply. I spoke with the Gould Immigration Clinic at USC, and they said people that have missed the deadline should contact the USC Immigration Clinic and set up a consultation. There may be other options available. Back to you, Madeline. Life and pro-choice is heating up again after the House of Representatives passed a bill that would make all abortions after 20 weeks illegal in every state. The bill is based on the idea that at 20 weeks, a fetus can feel pain. It would ban abortions after this point except in cases of rape, incest, or a threat to the life of the mother. Doctors could face up to five years in prison for performing an abortion. But one pro-life active advocate believes the bill does not go far enough. This bill is a very good thing. This bill needs to be passed and it needs to become law. Reproductive rights is, is the right to reproduce. It is not the right to kill your offspring. If the bill becomes a federal law, it would create conflict with the California abortion laws, which do not have these restrictions. Michael Earnhardt, faculty assistant of the law school, believes it should be a state's choice. I would hope that they would treat this much how they do marijuana laws. Uh, leave it up to the state's business. Uh, how the people uh, choose their health care is, is up to the citizens of the states, and the federal government should stay out. The bill would need 60 votes in the Senate to pass and move on to President Trump's desk. Now, USC cha is changing who takes care of our trash and how we throw it out. And a name change for one campus community is having a big impact on students. We'll hear from them next. And setup is underway in Chinatown for the second biggest celebration of the year. We'll talk to students about how they're honoring the Mid-Autumn Festival. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us when others are down, to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to oneamericaappeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I've realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. He took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. USC is in the process of switching who takes out our trash. That means we'll get new bins across campus. USC facilities say they'll have compartments for landfill and recyclables, and we'll have pictures to show you what you can recycle. The new bins have already been added to some buildings in the village, the Herman Ostro School of Dentistry, Caprillion Hall, and West Residential Colleges. But with these new bins comes new responsibility. Currently what we have is our, our hauler does sort everything. They open every bag and sort it. However, come January 1st when we move to the new required hauler, they do not do that at all. Students really need to be conscious because now like there's no one at these waste facilities that's going to be resorting and looking through it. It's like all on us. We really need to be um, educating on ourselves on what is and what isn't recyclable. The new bins will be rolling out in phases and should be all over campus by the end of the next school year. The Latino Student Assembly has changed its name to show Latin X to show so, sorry to su show support for transgender or non or gender non-conforming members. LSA hopes the name change will make for a more inclusive space for students. Language is always evolving. Communities have their own terms, their own slangs. Um, oftentimes, people feel like they have to choose between communities, and this name change is hopefully like a symbolic way to make space for those people in our assembly. We talked to Spanish professor Goretti Frito Botana about the difficulties of gender identification in the Spanish language, and she gave us some advice. We've had um, 
professors raised the issue that someone in their class had exp expressed the wish to be addressed in a gender neutral way and it's really hard to live up to. I try to talk it out with a person and see what may come close to representing them. LSA will be hosting a mixer on October 17th that will explore the name change and the term Latinx. Well, it has certainly been getting hotter outside. That's weird. I thought it was getting colder, but I'm sure Erica has a more accurate forecast. Erica? Thanks, Suji. It's been really chilly in other areas of the U.S., but right now in Southern California, it's still very much hot. Let's take a look at the current conditions. Right now, it's 74 degrees, really nice and warm. Taking a look at tomorrow, up in the mountains in Big Bear, it's 67 degrees. And taking a look at the coast in Malibu, it's 76 degrees. Pretty good weather. Taking it back home to USC, you can see all around high 80s. So if you're planning a trip to the beach, it's, now is a really good time. Heading to the five-day forecast, looks like it's fall season, but the weather has not quite caught up yet. Take a look at Saturday's high 96 degrees. <coughs> the Puerto Rican government has released a list of items to donate to victims of Hurricane Maria. They say they're in need of water, baby wipes, canned food, flashlights, and batteries. If you're interested in donating to the aid effort, here are a list of organizations that are lending a hand. GoFundMe has created a centralized landing page to host all campaigns created for those affected by Hurricane Maria. Wow, it seems like there's been tragedy after tragedy lately. I know, and it's like we need more help and we just got to keep going. Well, I think that list is a great place to start. Thank you so much. Thanks, Erica. Now, on a lighter note, today marks the Mid-Autumn Festival, the second largest Chinese celebration after Chinese New Year. Traditionally, people in China enjoy the day off and gather time with their families. Festival traditions include looking at the moon, hanging colorful lanterns, and eating mooncakes. Mooncakes are a traditional Chinese pastry and a symbol of family reunion. The Mid-Autumn Festival represents family gathering and unity uh, with loved ones. The significant mooncake, I think, is it has a meaning in Chinese traditional culture because it's round, so round in, Ch in Chinese it means gathering together. Now, the USC Chinese Student and Scholars Association held a mid-autumn festival gala on Sunday night. Dancers, singers, and musicians performed at Bovard Auditorium. While the celebration is continuing, another event will be held on Parkside Lawn this Friday night. Guests can paint lanterns, play mahjong, and enjoy traditional mooncakes. Did you hear about the water polo team, Maddie? You know, I didn't, but I'm sure our sports anchor Amy McRae has more on that. I do indeed. The USC men's water polo team has just been ranked the number one team in the nation. Rennie Meyer Wally of the USC of the USC women's volleyball team was in the studio earlier, and the USC women's soccer team is in Arizona preparing for their next two matches. Sports is next. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. After 15 years of smoking, Eva Marie quit. There's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking. Now start screening. Learn more 
at savedbythescan.org. The football team has a lot going on. After their loss to Washington State on Friday, a video surfaced of a USC player appearing to knock over a Washington State fan. Let's take a look at some of the footage shot by someone in attendance on Friday, on Friday night's game. As you can see here, uh, just previously, a man appears to knock over a video here, uh, appears to knock over a fan here in the spotlight slow motion. You can see the fan go down. Once again, here it is right there. During a Pac-12 conference call on Tuesday, USC head coach Clay Helton said, quote, We're aware of the situation. Internal discipline has been taken, and that discipline will remain in-house, end quote. Helton just announced that Vianney Tolomevao will have a surgery on his torn pectoral muscle. This will be a season-ending surgery for the senior offensive lineman. Helton is unsure if he'll be able to get a medical fifth year. Stephen Carr is now, has now been added to the injured, injured player list, joining Gustin and Tolomevao. The freshman standout didn't practice yesterday and is currently wearing a boot. After practice yesterday, I caught up with running back Ronald Jones about how the team is doing. What adjustments do running backs have to make when three starters on the offensive line go out in a game with injuries? Yeah, uh, it gets tough sometimes, you know, the young guys, but you know, they're trained to do what they do. And you know, they get in there and we don't lose a step, so, yeah. With car injured, do you feel added pressure on you? Um, not at all. You know, we have a lot of confidence in the guys we have. And, you know, like you said, we got, you know, when guys go down, you know, it's the next man up. So, uh, by I said, James, they are ready to go. Our correspondent, Chloe, headed out on campus to ask students what they think the Trojans need to improve on in order to be victorious against Oregon State on Saturday. Chloe? Thanks, Amy. Coming off USC's tough loss to Washington State last weekend, I thought I'd go out and interview some students about what they think USC needs to improve upon most in order to beat Oregon State on Saturday. I just think they need to get out to an early start. You know, I think they let teams hang around a little bit too long and that gives them some hope, but they, as long as USC plays their full potential, they should be able to handle Oregon State pretty easily. I think they should protect Sam more. Um, in the last game, they didn't protect him as much, so he got set um, quite often and try to have the least number of penalties as possible. Most of our games have uh, been decided by the fourth quarter, so hopefully we're able to um, get ahead in the game a little earlier and uh, win. I feel like last year Sam Darnold was kind of a star and he was playing really well well, but um, I don't think he's been playing to his fullest potential recently. I think that we all need to show up and support to show that we're there for our Trojan family. The loss and the need for improvements, the students support the team and hope they can make the necessary changes to be the Beavers on Saturday. Back to you, Amy. Thanks, Chloe. The USC women's soccer team won their game this weekend against Oregon and is preparing for their games this weekend. Well, Arizona is, is a team that uh, feeds off their pressure, their set pieces, uh, you know, making the game a little chaotic. Um, and so we're, we're trying to make sure that, you know, I, I thought we were, weren't as good in that environment on Sunday versus Oregon. Um, and so we're going to try to find ways to, to calm us down and, and recognize what teams are trying to do to us. I think we're focusing on getting the results and winning and just coming out every game with a high intensity and just finishing these teams off early to just win. The USC Trojans are on the ground in Arizona preparing to take on the University of Arizona tomorrow and Arizona State on Sunday. Heading to the court, USC women's volleyball player Brittany Abercrombie was named ESPNW's National Player of the Week. Senior setter Rennie Meyer Wally was in the studio earlier to talk about the team's offense. Moving on with this season, I think we're getting better, especially with the Washington match. We kind of created this mentality of we're just going to be dominators and we're not going to be scared to go and be scared to make a play and we're just going to go for it and literally leave everything we have on the court. Offensively, I'm just trying to get my hitters like the best hittable ball so that they can put the ball away and that we can win. Crombie put up a team high 13 kills in USC's sweep of Washington on Sunday and 13 kills in the team's win over WSU the day before. The women's volleyball team currently stands at 12 and 3 and will be playing again against the University of Arizona at Arizona on Friday. Justin Suh of the USC men's golf team has been, has been named the Pac-12 Men's Golfer of the Month. This past week, Suh won his second collegiate title and notched another top 10 finish to close out the month. Suh won the title with a three-stroke margin with a 10 under 203. 
Even though their first game is over a month away, the USC men's basketball team has officially named its captains. The men leading the Trojans will be point guard Jordan McLaughlin and forwards Chemezi, Metu, and Benny Boatwright. The Trojans' first game will be against Cal State Fullerton on November 10th. In other news, the men's water polo team is officially the number one team in the nation. Their updated ranking was announced earlier this afternoon. The Trojans dethroned crosstown rivals UCLA. This is the first week since last November that the Trojans have held the top spot in the country. They host number seven Long Beach State tomorrow. And in other news, the Arizona Diamondbacks are currently playing the, Rock the Colorado Rockies in Arizona. The current score is 0-6 to six with Arizona leading at the top of the fourth. The winner of tonight's game will face the Los Angeles Dodgers in a five-game series starting this fi Friday. Do you guys have any interest in baseball? I'm no? a huge Dodgers fan. <laughs> we'll keep up with you. Thank you so much, Amy. Of course. Thanks. Thanks to you guys. Advisement may just be getting started, but the schedule of classes for next semester is already out. We're looking at some cool classes you can take in the spring. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. USC's spring schedule of classes is officially out. Right now, it's only available through web registration. But soon, it will be on the schedule of classes website, too. Here are some of the classes being offered next semester. ACAD 309 Dreams and Madness, the art of Japan's golden age of animation. It looks at the impact of Japanese filmmakers like Hayao Mizaki. RxRS 201, the history and geography of drugs, looking at literature to see how drug use has shaped history. And ENGL 352 Book Packing, using novels to explore different cultures. Is there anything that you want to take? Uh, you know, I want to take all three. Can we do that? <laughs> awesome, wonderful. That was really fun. And what are you fun. looking for signing up for? Well, I first need to see my advice learned. So Great. We'll see. Awesome. Well, we'll anyways, see you soon. Thank you guys for watching Annenberg TV News. For everyone at Annenberg Media, I'm Suji Nam. And I'm Madeline Audley. You can watch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Good night.